Yo, 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 what up, my people? It's your boy, <laughs> Radical. Now, I'm coming back with our chat with another video. This is going to be a review. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, apparently, Tariq Nasheed is making a documentary uh, on the history of hip-hop, right? And his documentary is going to be, is pretty much focused on the creation of hip-hop, who started it, some of the hidden history that a lot of people might not know or might not see or whatever the case is. And a lot of people... Are praising it for for being for being the first uh, factual quote unquote uh, documentary that actually tackles that history, and other people are not praising it. They're questioning it, saying that it's a uh, it's gonna be just a bunch of non sequiturs, a bunch of nonsense, and and just a bunch of lies, right? And I fall into the to the camp where. There probably in this documentary going to be a sprinkle of truth with most of it, majority of it. Is this going to be narrative narrative based, um, like he always have done when he was uh, when Tariq Nasheed was Pan African, he gave praises and and accolades to everything Black and African. You know what I mean? It was Africans that did this, and that, now that he's doing the FBA, he's he's doing the same exact thing. You know, twisting history into FBAs on things that doesn't even make sense and you could definitely debunk very quickly now um where i'm gonna be reviewing dr colon's um review on the hip-hop documentary and i want to give a huge shout out to dr colon i'm gonna link that video on the description down below huge shout out to him because uh he is a hip-hop historian i consider him that you know, he was there when it was created. And the thing is that you can't tell me somebody from Alabama is going to give me a big, huge history lesson on on hip hop when cats from the Bronx already knew exactly what was up. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. So I'm going to be playing the review. I'm going to give my takes on it. And uh, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll go you know about our, our, our way but now before i start the takes or whatever the case is let me just say this i interviewed dr colon not once has he said or i've said in some of my many podcasts or whatever the case is even in that interview that um latinos created you know hip-hop on its own um black americans cannot say that they created hip hop on its own. Caribbeans can't say that, and Latinos can't say that. It's a combination of Black Americans, Latinos, and Caribbeans that came together and brought this thing about hip hop. Now, the argument is who did what first, and all this other stuff. And to me, is meaningless. T to be completely honest, to me, is meaningless of who did what first or whatever the case is, because at the end of the day. Latinos, nor Caribbeans, nor Black Americans own hip hop. You know who does? Them white folks who be writing them checks up in Universal, Sony uh, Music Studios, and all these other places. All right. So it doesn't really matter talking about who created hip hop, but yet we can, can't even control it. You know what I'm saying? There's garbage right now in the hip hop streets on YouTube, but yet we're we're fighting about who created it, but we can't even control it. I'm saying we can't even have the right message get 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 brought upon if something we created, please. Now, so that's all I'm gonna say. At the end of the day, is buffoonery, you know, because at the end of the day, we don't control nothing. You, you feel me? But let's go on to the video, and I, I'm gonna start breaking stuff down. All right. This is the 50th anniversary of hip hop, and we still have a lot of discrepancies as far as the origins of hip hop. First of all, it's not the 50th anniversary of hip hop. Bambada has said that it's not 50 years. It didn't start in 1973. It begins in 1975. It's not 50 years of hip hop. A lot. Okay. All right. That that was that was a small correction there. Shout out to Dr. Colon. All right. Let's keep it going. The claims. Notice when Kaz says a lot of claims. They zero in on crazy legs, the Puerto Rican. Who did what? Who was the first this? Who was the this and that and such and such? But at the end of the day, we need a definitive story, all right? And that story can only be told by the founders of this culture. Here you have Grandmaster Kaz 
who has rocked with Puerto Ricans his whole career. You know, it, it seems as though he's trying to question uh, this legitimacy of our contribution, but yet he ends his quote and they show the cold crush with DJ Charlie Chase, the Puerto Rican. It's it's very it's very it's very interesting how Dr. Colon is um is being very observant in this review and is breaking down a lot of BS. It's it's funny and um I'm going to show I'm going to show something very interesting after this is all said and done. I'm going to show something very interesting. I want to I want to know what your guys takes is and all that, but let's keep it going. Everything was being driven and influenced by young black American culture, like the slang, the style of dress, the initial uh, music that we chose. First of all, they use Lord Jamar, who is not from the Bronx. He's from New Rochelle. And then he says that everything was black. And then they show the clip from Wild Style of the electric boogie. But what they fail to show from that same clip are all the b-boys that are on the floor. All of them were Puerto Ricans. Look at all. You, you see, this is and this is what I'm telling you that it's gonna be. This documentary seems like it's gonna be a bunch of revisionist type of history just to fit a narrative. And mind you, hey, listen, you got a narrative. Do what you gotta do, but don't twist. History, the, the real teacher is history. You know, you can't you can't bend the truth. You know what I'm saying? And it seems like that's what he's trying to do. But let's keep it going. Uh, all the boroughs got, you know, money making Manhattan and money earning Mount Vernon and Crooklyn. The Bronx with the boogie down Bronx. We was partying up there. I am Coke Lara, the first MC of hip hop. First cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntables because when I came with it, nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix. They want. Uh, wait a minute. Something I noticed. Uh, how can Homie say that he picked up the mic first? You know what I'm saying, but then contradict itself. Down Bronx, we was partying up there. I am Coke Larock. How can Coke Larock say he picked up the mic first? And right after somebody else is like, Yo, I picked up the mic first. Which one is it, bro? Uh, The first MC of hip hop, first cat to pick the mic up. I introduced rapping to the turntable because when I came with it, you see what I'm saying. You see what I'm saying? I introduced rap into the turn. Which one is it? it? You know, like I said, this documentary is going is it's just like the Bible, a, bu- a bunch of uh, a, a bunch of you know unanswered questions. You know what I'm saying? A bunch of a bunch of c- contradictions. Nobody in the world was doing it. I'm right after Rudy Ray Moore. They want to come in the mix. They want to say I was. We started. No, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. What can't be known as hip hop was solely an African American creation. Now, I'm not sure if Charlie Rock is speaking about me, but nowhere have I ever claimed that we started anything. Nowhere have I ever claimed that Puerto Ricans started b boying. Nowhere have I claimed that. What I have claimed is that blacks and Puerto Ricans brought b boying to the forefront together. We did this together at the same time, okay? This is a fact that the, 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 the crews that are not mentioned, as I mentioned before, TBB, South Soul, Star Child, The Rock, CC Crew, The Rockwell Association, they're not gonna talk about those crews because those crews are primarily Puerto Ricans. So, you know, this is, this is what I'm saying when, you know, th- this accusation of what we're saying. No, we're not saying that. Okay, but we're definitely not agreeing with the fact that this is an African American thing. It is not. It is a multicultural uh, phenomenon that begins in the Bronx. 
and I, and I want to clarify with that. That's absolutely true. He said that in my interview. I've even said that. I've seen a lot of Latinos say that. But it seems like Tariq and a bunch of these little FBA clowns are just twisting our words in order to fit their narrative again. You know, um, it, it's it's just it's just funny. It's just it's just very hysterical, to to be completely honest. Because nobody's saying that we created. It, you know what I'm saying? Nobody. But look what he just said. Also, he named a bunch of b-boy crews. Y'all could just do your googles and see the year that they were coming. It coming up 75, 77, 74. You know what I'm saying? Look at some of these b-boy crews that he just mentioned. Do your own research, and y'all will start seeing like, yo, this shit is not, yo, what Tariq is saying is not adding up. You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it going. What would you get out of some Jamaican toast? What is that? I've never heard of a rapper use a Jamaican toast or a Jamaican flu as a rhyme. I've never heard of it, and I don't know where that myth came from. My name is Legendary Kane Trixie from the Bronx, BX from the West. By the way, th this is AI imagery right here. This is not real. This is AI image. I just want you to just know that real quick. This isn't a real photo. This is AI imagery. And it's and it's there's a reason why Tariq did that on purpose. Let, let's uh, Dr. Colon breaks it down. He exposes it. Check that out. Check this out. That's sad. I am the first break dancer. So now you get Trixie coming on and saying he's the first break dancer, and they show these AI images of Trixie on the floor. We don't have no images of Trixie on the floor. This is an AI image of Trixie on the floor. First of all, Trixie never hit the floor. Trixie was not a, B, a, a ground rocker. He was not a floor rocker. He was not a down rocker. He never did that. He admitted that on Norrin Rad's interview. You see how disingenuous this documentary is going to be. And that narrative that hip hop has had three founding fathers, that's been rolling for the last almost 30 years, which isn't true. You don't have just three people who created. Shout out to Tariq and that fake ass museum. You know what I'm saying? Uh, don't, he likes to talk about Africans and all that, but he got like a whole Egyptian casket back, man. You know, this guy is a grifter, bro. You know, this is crazy. So hip hop. Hip hop was created by a number of different people. And now you got Tariq saying that, you know, the, the, the three founding fathers are not the three founding fathers. That's not a true narrative. Well, it's interesting that these three people, I understand you can't interview Bambada, but you can interview Herc and you could have interviewed Flash. They are around. You could have went to Flash's uh, day at Cortona Park, you didn't show up there. So you don't even interview these people because your job is to eliminate, erase the Caribbean contribution to hip hop culture by saying that these guys are not the foundation. And then you cleverly throw in Disco King Mario as if he's the foundation. I am the grandfather. You see what I'm saying? Like even Dr. Colon sees it. This is going to be a very... Yo, this is going to be a very disingenuous documentary. I'm the godfather of the graffiti culture. I am the first element of hip hop. That's all I can say to that cornbread statement. The roots of hip hop being Jamaican, absolutely false. Well, what, what's clear, what seems to be clear with Debbie D's statement is that um, either she has not done the research herself, either she um, is not aware of this route, either she's not aware of 1952, either she's not aware of the sound system culture, either she's not aware of the sound clash culture, which predates hip hop from Jamaica, from Trench Town. So maybe she's not aware of that. But this is the same lady who says that she's the first female MC. Um, and people question that. So I would question her on some of her information. My name is MC Shah Rock. I am a founding member of the MC slash rap culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just that's not that, that's not a lie. That's actually pretty true. Uh, mixtapes were were like 
the the news. You know what I mean? The the, the hot joint at uh, of that time. I want to I want to see that part again. That's actually true. People will share mixtapes and party mixtapes and all that other stuff. I heard drug dealers at that time would pay DJs huge amounts of money if they gave him a shout out. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Al, um, Alpo. He, he That's what he used to do, apparently. Uh, let's keep it going. Culture. Cassette tapes was the internet of our time. It just traveled around by hand. But I know for a fact that the B-Boy stand started from the gods, the five percenters that would be at the jams back in the days who were acting as security. If they get the real truth of how it all was created, then so many lives would not be able to be in existence. And then they end with DJ Faze. Um, you know, like maybe some of the lies that you tell, maybe some of the lies that Disco King Mario was extending the brakes in 1971, maybe some of those lies. See, shout out to, shout out to him. Hold on real quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to um, shout out to you know Dr. Colon and all that. Uh, he, he the reason why I even brought him up and have him there is because the man the man knows the man knows his stuff. You know what I'm saying? He he knows his stuff. I I am not well versed or educated on the the on the history of uh, hip hop and how it started in the Bronx. There's a lot of things that Dr. Colon has put me on that I wasn't aware of. But it's very funny how, again, uh, Tariq likes to clown, um, uh, you know, Ho Ho uh, um, Jose Gonzo, right? Oh, he had a camera back in the day. That's all he did. That's the contribution Puerto Ricans did. He had a camera, right? That Puerto Ricans didn't do anything just but, but have a camera. But yet... Tariq is using a lot of Latinos pictures up in his documentary. Check this out. So this is the uh, uh, this is a picture, right, uh, of of Twitter, and Tariq says, you know, get involved in the making. Look at look at Joe Gonzo. He he says it. This is Joe Gonzo, the legal owner of the copyrighted photos. You are utilizing in your video. I did not authorize you to get that images in your project and demand that they are removed immediately. Failure to comply will lead to legal actions, which is extremely hilarious. If Latinos were in there, how the hell were you, are you going to get access to these photos? If Latinos were in there in the beginning, you recording, documenting things, you know what I'm saying? How you got access to the photo? And if Latinos weren't there, why would you even want to use our photos in the first place? You know what I'm saying? Let's keep it real, my people. Let's keep it real. It just doesn't. It just doesn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It just doesn't make sense. But anyway, with that being said, I'm gonna catch y'all later. Um, tell me what y'all think. All right.